All right. Welcome back to very snowy, crappy day in New England. Um, I'm getting ready to take on a little bit, a couple of small timber framing projects. And one of my go-to saws, this is uh, the DeWalt DCS 573 battery. Uh, seven and a quarter circular saw. And I love this saw, it's my go-to everyday saw. So when I'm out in the field, I mean, I have um, good worm drive saws, lots of corded saws, lots of battery circular saws, but this is my go-to flex volt, on the fly, ripping, cutting, everyday work saw. Uh, it's been very, very heavily used. I love the power of this saw. I love the battery life of the newer flex volt batteries, not the older ones. Um, the power of this saw is great. It does a terrific job ripping the whole nine yards. Love this saw. There is one thing that I absolutely hate about this saw. Um, now, saying that, it has this saw has made me a better sawyer. The reason for that is that this saw will not cut along a guide. Um, let me get you a better view here really quick so I can illustrate what I'm talking about. Now, I'm not saying that all of the DeWalt saws have the same problem. I'm just saying mine does. And I'm going to show you why it has the problem. And it drove me crazy for a long time. Make sure your view is good here. Two things that this saw will not do is, number one, it will not cut along a guide. If you, and I realize it's a combination square, but I don't have a speed square with me right now in here. But if you go ahead and drop this on your, on your wood, make a line to use as a guide to rip square. This saw on the back side here will walk away from the square like, like that. Not this is very exaggerated, just enough to where I can see that it walked away from the guide, and there's nothing you can do to hold it against the guide. The other thing is your zero line on the saw, uh, which is right here. So when you chalk a line and you use your zero line to eyeball down from here to rip something. When I cut along that zero line, and I do a lot of ripping um, slabs and things like that with chalk lines or sheet goods, um, doing building sheet supply with things like that, if I run that zero guide perfect, as I'm going down, the blade will always end up an eighth to a sixteenth off the line on this side. I'm going to zoom you back up here. I'm going to show you. Oh, no, I'll keep you on that view because I'm going to show you why it is that way. At least I think I've finally found it. But um, this saw has made me a better sawyer because what it has made me do is stop relying on a guide to uh, cut square. And now I just cut along the line, and I've done a shit pile of building where that's all I've done is cut along a line. And have become very, 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 very good at it. And I can cut very, very square doing that. I mean, extremely square. So what I want to do, the other thing that I don't like, and I'm sure that DeWalt loves this, but uh, for me is this saw uh, does not prop the guard open well. Wow, look at that pencil. The saw does not prop the guard open well with a pencil. And this one's just not going to stay there, maybe. Come on. Just either. All right. So the reason that this doesn't cut straight, give me one second and walk over to my pencils here. Let me go over to pencils here. I'm going to need to make some notations on this saw as I show you what's up with this saw. And DeWalt, if you are watching, I'm just going to show you this. And then we're going to, I'm going to try to fix it. See if I can fix it. I hope I can. Um, when you are measuring 
from an edge to a saw blade, uh, one of the best things to, that you can do, especially like on a table saw, is to make sure that you use the same tooth. Um, what the gist of this is, is that the this plate, this edge right here, this edge right here, are skew to the blade. So when you are running it along the guide, you're fighting the blade, and the blade's pulling you out off of what this is riding on, which is why I just do it by, I just cut them by eye now. But we're going to find out how much, we're going to find out which way it is, and um, see if we can fix it. I'm going off camera real quick. I'm just going to grab a Sharpie, Get a Sharpie so I can mark the tooth. We're going to find out how much it's off. I don't know. I have not measured it yet. I'm waiting on a new set of Mitsutoyo calipers, so I'm using a crappy set here, but this is going to give us everything that we ask for as far as make sure that I'm zero. So we're going to measure to this tooth from the outside of the plate here without deflecting the tooth. All right, so that's one inch, 517 thousandths. So this is uh, 1.517 from here to this tooth, the outside of this tooth. So basically it's telling you that this is supposed to be, this should be inch and a half from the blade. So when you do your offsets for a guide or whether this should be inch and a half, but that would be 17 thousandths off. Now let's go ahead and we're gonna rotate it up to the front here. We're gonna measure it the front side and we're gonna see what we get. Make sure we're zero. Down. One more click. Nope. Not one more click. It's not going to do one more click there. I got one inch, 456 thousand. So it's less than an inch and a half in the front. I'm going to double check it. Try it again. One inch, 452. One inch 442. Oh, that deflected the blade. One inch 440. That was a good click. One inch 440. That was a good click. So I got down here one inch 0 0.440. So 517 or or zero is seven that's ten that's eleven or one is four that should be um seven. 77 thousandths. So let's do for 40, 0, 7, 7. And 7. That's 2, 5, 5, 2, 7. So it's 0, 6, 7. So it's 67 thousandths difference from here to here, 67 thousandths. That's a lot. Uh, so what, the, what needs to happen here is that this plate needs to go this way and, and go this way because really you want the outside of that tooth to be an inch and a half from the blade, um, based on the si based on the size of the blade too, whether it's three thirty seconds or if it was a thin curve or whatever. But for a standard saw blade, you really want an inch and a half. Um, 
since this is 517 here, I, uh, I, and this isn't easily readily adjustable, what I do want to try to do, I'm going to back you up in a second. I just want to get the... Get everything marked off here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ten. So it's point... Point zero six seven out. Um, what I want to see now these seats here are tapered. So what that indicates to me is that when I go ahead and tighten these up, they're going to kind of want to find their own their own center, and they're going to try to pull me back to where I am. And that's just a hole. Nothing there. That one's clean. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try and loosen um, these torque screws and See if we can get a pivot point. Probably this one right here. So I'm going to loosen these two and these three and see if I can pivot this slightly. I'll, I'll just crack this one barely loose. See if we can pivot this slightly like this. And that should move this front slightly like that and this back slightly like this. Uh, to give you an idea of 67 thousandths, this sawtooth on this blade right here is 69 thousandths wide. This is 69 thousandths of an inch right here. So it's exactly, exactly a full tooth off. It's a full tooth off this way. So we want to pivot it. I'm sorry. It's a full tooth off this way. We want to pivot it like this. So this distance gets smaller and this distance hopefully comes out a little bit. Um, and it is a lot. So uh, first thing I got to do, I kind of grab, let's back you up a little bit. Maybe I can, so you can see what I'm doing. So I grabbed all my Torx bits out of, you won't be able to see my face, but hopefully the audio is good with this new mic. I did a video on these mics. If you want to check them out, they're only $12. Um, I grabbed all my Torx bits out of my tool belt. So I'm sure one of them will fit here. It's pretty loose on that right one. In my tool belt, to have like every Torx bit known to man. That one's pretty good there. Let's see what's on the other side. So these go through the bracket. All three of these go through the bracket. So we're going to loosen all three of them. Now, it's going to be easy to say right now, well, maybe you dropped it. Maybe you bent it, blah, 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 blah. Now, first of all, I'm going to full well admit I have dropped this saw. Oh, yeah, it shifts a lot. I'm going to full well admit I have dropped this saw. Absolutely. Hopefully, I'm down here. I am in no way saying that this, this saw has been used for, oh, I don't know, three years hard. Um, during COVID, this saw got a workout. And there's no way I'm going to tell you I never dropped this off a ladder. I'm not going to tell you I never dropped it on concrete. I'm not going to tell you I ever dropped it when I was working up in the rafters. I have dropped this saw, but this saw never cut along a guide from day one. The first day I got it, 
just cutting along a speed square, it would wa always want to walk away. Um, now, I have not had a chance in my own brain right now to try to um, justify, I mean, uh, work out in my head whether these measurements make sense in that walking away in the back or not. I'm not even going to try to. I just know it does. And I just know I would like to fix it. So I know that it's not square to the blade. I know that's the reason why. Oh, yeah, it does shift a lot. The question is, it does shift a lot, but the question is, when I tighten those back down, if they're going to try and push it back because they're tapered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cock this all the way over that way. I'm just going to snug one of these down just a hair. Yep, it's moving it back. I wonder if I can tighten one of these. Just These ones don't seem to move it as much. I'm going to take another measurement. All right, so that's kind of locked in. Let's take a measurement now and see where that is. Let's see how much it moved. It seems to have moved quite a bit. All right, got to get my Bluetooth back here. Make sure that I'm zero. Yep. Go to my Bluetooth. One point five oh nine. So it moved ten, well, almost ten thousandths. So let's run another measurement. Just make sure we're getting repeat. Point five one two. Probably flexed it. One point five oh eight. So it did move. Check it in the front, see if it skewed the other way in the front. There's no way I expect it to be this simple. Uh, make sure I'm zero. Yep. This uh, caliper got one, oh, one nine. What? Holy shit. Four three two. That's still within eight thousandths of where it was. Four three two. Four three five. So, uh, if anything, it's still going to go that way more. And I don't think there's a lot we can do back here, but these look like they can move easier. So let's try that. Let's go ahead and do a pivot point here. So that's moving it out. Let's see if I can get it over here. Now, I don't know how much this... Now, the, the, the other option here is to go ahead and just grind this edge to right um, or fi file this edge to right, which I can do um, with no problem. I'm just trying to see if it's adjustable enough to do it. Well, that does move a lot. The problem, like, it, like I said before, is that it does move a lot, but when I tighten the... Oh, this one looks like it's not centered, so... When you tighten these down, they're going to want to pull it back. Let's go ahead and measure it again. Let's see how much that moved. This is what I would consider. Is it zero? Yep. What I would consider is a fatal flaw. What three six? What three five? So it's gotten less over here. This whole plate's moved like this. I don't think anything's happened back here. So what, what this means is that something could be really bent. And I know you're going to have to trust me on the fact that it was like that new.
five, two, three. I hit that one pretty hard. I think I'm pretty close to where I was. Five, two, one. Five, two, one, five, two, three. So it looks like adjusting is not going to do it. So let's take a look at. Our connection points here. Um, I think what I would have to do is I think I would have to take this saw plate off and drill some countersinks bigger, drill the holes out bigger uh, so that I can adjust it. What's going to happen is because these countersinks are here, when these, these cone-shaped screws go down, they're going to pull it back to where it is. And I don't see any real way around that right now. See, I can. So I can skew it, but the problem is when I tighten these down, they're going to hit the cone and they're going to pull it back like that. And I don't really see any way short of making all the wallowing these holes out of making it not do that. This doesn't have any adjustment in it. This doesn't have any adjustment in it. This also does not have any adjustment in it except for these screws. What's in here? It's just a hole, I assume. Yep. I think this is my stop. Yeah, that's my zero stop. And the other thing that was curious about this saw was that... Oh, that wasn't this one. That was my skill. Um, this one is not that saw. Um, Well, there is another point right here. If I could shim, I don't know if you can see this. This right here. This could move with it tightened down. If I pulled that out, and shimmed it. I don't know how much plays in it. Probably should find that out. Let's try that. Let's uh, see if we can get these snug down. Let's see if we can maybe adjust that other thing. So I kind of want, kind of want this to stay over as far as I can get it. So I want to find a screw that doesn't look like it's going to pull it back. I'm going to tighten that one down. Snug them real. On this side here, when we go down, she's going to try and pull it back. This one's not that bad.
So I think what I could do, like I was saying, is adjust that where it mounts in the front. I could get, could take some measurements, get just the right amount of shim in there to move the front that way, and that might do it too. Let's go ahead and remeasure it real quick. Just make sure we're in the same spot. That was that was 1.517. Let's see where we are now. Make sure we're zero. Yep, perfect zero. This thing's working. 1.524. Let's try it again. It's actually got bigger. One point five two four. One point five two four. It's twenty four thousand. It's more than half. You don't need a dial caliper, uh, a, a digital caliper, to do this. You could do it with just a. I originally did it with just a sliding uh, combination square out in the field one day to know that I was it was wrong. Come on. 1.442. That's where it was before. I go. Seven. Six. Blades flexing, I can see it. I'm pushing the blade. 1.452. 1 1.452. It definitely deflected a teeny bit. We'll just call it 1.450. So, if anything, uh, this grew 10 thousandths by what I did here. So, this did move 10 thousandths more away that way. That helped. Uh, but it's still 67, 67 thousandths off. So let's go to the top side. Go to the top side. And we may have to take this whole thing off. It does look like that. See if I can get uh, what I have lying around here. I'm going to adjust your view just a little bit. going to have to, we're going to take out, there's a lock nut here, a Torx on the other side. We're going to take this out. Um, we're going to take this whole thing off and we want to shim the front side this way. So that means that I think on the back side over here, Right here, if there's not enough there, I might have to sand a little bit off that. Uh, and then stick some sort of shim in on this side to pull the front side of the saw this way. That should work. Uh, so we're going to get at that. You can tell we're going to take the torques out of the bottom of it. And take the torques out of the bottom. Let's see if I got Yeah, this thing just kind of tilts away here. So we want to find the torques that fits that. Let's get out my guide. 
screw here. This out of your way. And wallowing these out is not the answer. They are big too. It looks like, I don't know if you can see this. Look how big these holes are for these little screws. But the problem is that the countersink pulls it back when you, when you try to move it like this, the countersink pulls it back. Uh, we could try to do this simply and wallow these out. Um, let's see about that. So we know we're going to do this side. I take the whole plate off. Do, that. do I have a countersink in here that I can do it with? Let's see if I have a countersink over here. If I don't, I'm going to have to go out in my outside shop. i got to put this draw back together. This draw is coming apart. I don't think I have my countersinks in here. I think they're in the outside shop. So let's do this. Let's look at that shuts now. Can I just do it? Using a drill head. Let's see if we can do that. I'm gonna back down here. We're gonna take this plate all the way off. And uh, we'll see if we can just do it with a drill head on the uh, drill press. Because, like I said, this is kind of a fatal flaw to this. There's plenty of slop in this back thing here. Okay. So, essentially, what we need to do is we need to wallow out this side here, this side here, this side here. This side here. That's what we need to do. Um, I might be able just to do it with just a regular drill. Let me get this thing off the bench here. Throw it in the garbage where it belongs. No, I take that back. That's a good saw. It's a really good saw. So let's get ourselves some drill bits over here. Find out what drill bit lines up with the countersink. About it right there. What is that? So it's about 2764. So it's probably the 716 or it's a metric. Uh, it's close. There's plenty of play. There is plenty of play in the holes. It's the, it's the countersink that's going to cause us a problem. So let's see. Got myself my. I'm an all DeWalt guy, but I do have. I bought some uh, rigid tools from a buddy once upon a time, and I keep these on the inside shop, not in my everyday work tools.
I'm going to clamp this down. See if I can really put some pressure on that side. Get myself maybe something underneath it too, so I don't drill into my bench if I want to go down through that hole a little bit. Mm. My drill press board here. I don't care so much about the inch and a half. I think I'll wallow out a little bit on this side, on these two. You know, and I could just go in there with a round rat tail file. Do I have a chainsaw file in here? I would almost fit through there too. What we're trying to do is we're trying to move the countersink. Trying to move the countersink over a little bit. That definitely moved it. If I can move it over, I'll go with a bigger drill bit and drill these countersinks out bigger. I just want to get the meat off. These ones on this side. work good on this one. I think what I want to do is I want to flip this around and do that same thing from the side like I just did those. That worked really good on those. And hopefully that just gives me enough play. Oops, that's wrong way. Enough play to adjust the plate. I like the way I have the pressure there to do what I just did. That worked really good. Hopefully, uh, DeWalt sees this and says, hey, you shouldn't have to fix that. No, I know, and the problem is that DeWalt's just going to say, oh, I probably dropped it, but I'm telling you, being honest, it was like this way from day, it was like this from day one, it just was. I don't know how long these mics last, so. Yep, that's what I said. Oh, come on, dang All right, I think what I just did is going to give me enough. Let's get some stuff out of the way. We'll put it back together and see if we can adjust it now.
hopefully that's enough to where there'll be enough slop in the screws and they just won't want to self-center it back to where it was. And that'll make my life a lot easier. Ah, Jesus. Shop is such a mess. Let's get this thing back, put back together, and then we'll adjust it again. Get our pencil back in here. I wonder if I could throw a clamp on that. No. Get our pencil back in here to hold this open. DeWalt, I tell you what, if anybody from DeWalt watches this, you guys did a hell of a job making it so you can't pin this thing open. All right. So let's hope. Because I want to tell you, it's a pain in the ass when you can't you can't rip along a guide or cut along a guide. Let's just hoop. We'll get them all in there, and then we'll try to adjust it all the way sideways. And there is some there's play in this arm, so this side's not the side that's going to do it. That side's the one that's going to do it. So hopefully you can see what I did. I took the meat out of the shoulder here where these hit on the countersink. Hopefully enough. And we are going to find out in real time. If it's not enough, then I'll, I think I can probably get in there with a rat tail file and wall those holes out a little bit and angle them. Hopefully, you see a big difference just when I get these things in here. Get this one down a little bit closer, and then we'll try to snap it, pull it all the way over. You kind of want to pick the screw that's hitting the least. All right. All right, let's see if we affected it. So, find my Bluetooth. There it is. Let's see where this side is now. Make sure I'm zero. Yep. Five one nine moved a I don't know it's five one seven before and it flexed. 
517. This side did not move. <coughs> Hopefully this side moved. Zero, yep. Four five four. Move four thousands. Four five eight. Four five nine. Four five nine. Yeah, four five nine. So it moved ten thousands with what I just did. So that's not enough. So this is basically one four five nine one four six zero so forty fifty seven thousand still so <clears throat> I think what's going to happen if I keep going here I think I'm going to lose the integrity of the screw holes. So I don't think that this was the way to go. So a lot of meat there. I think the only thing to do is to adjust that other or try to bend it. One of the two. I could try to bend. This arm this way that would work too. No, what am I saying? Bend this arm that way. So I wonder, <coughs> let's see if we could do that. Problem with bending the arm is that we're going to be kind of at the mercy of, uh... oh, you know what I want to do? Let's do this just to make sure that uh, our measurements are consistent from this side. Well, we can double check it. We don't have to do that. We can just check the width of the plate. So this plate on this side at 6593. Six five nine three. Six six zero. Oh. Five nine six. Wow. So there's some of it right there. So I got six five eight two here. Six five nine six here. So this is fifteen thousands. Make sure we're back to zero. Yep, zero. This is fifteen thousands tapered as it is. It's thinner down here than it is up here. And that just could be some deformation in the metal. Six five nine five. Six five eight four five eight three. So twelve thousandths difference. More narrow down here. So that 
could mean, since these aren't parallel, that could mean that just filing this thing would be the best way to go. I'm just filing it till I hit my mark. Problem is that you got to keep putting it back and forth. You, know, you got to put it, file it, put it back. Unless I come up with a way to hold it down here somewhere and hold it like this, file it. Till it's parallel to the blade. So if I tighten it down, I'm going to pause you guys one second while I get it all tightened up, do some measurements. All right, so what I'm going to do, get you guys up just a little bit. I'm going to file on this. Oh, shit. I'm going to file on this and measure it till I get the back the same as the front on this side. Check it for flat. Just skim it flat, uh, and then off camera, I'm going to true the other side to this side. So let's see what we can do with this. I want to take the meat off here first. I'm going to try and stay as parallel as I can while I'm doing this. Let's see how much that took off. Gotta get down here. Let's see how what the kind of progress I'm making so I don't have to make you guys watch for like two hours. Point five three four. I flexed it a lot. That can't be more than it was. Point five two six. Five two five was five two four. We've taken basically nothing off it. Zero. Might have to go at this with a with a belt grinder or something. The way to do this to true something is to start with small and then keep increasing until you're going all the way across. We don't want to take anything off the front. We want it all to come off here first, then check it for flat and take out the high spots. Let's see how much that's come down. Zero. Without flexing it. Come on. Five, three, two. That's more. I didn't touch it. <laughs> Can't be more. Can't be more. Five, two, two. It's going to be a really slow process. What do I have that I can really hog at it with? That might have to go to a sander grind up. 
I mean, I grind up. This isn't going to go faster than this, then I can go to an upright belt grinder. And it's removing metal. I don't know if you guys can see how much metal's on there. It's impossible, impossible for it to be more. I just said it's just not taking it off very fast. Mm. I could be not getting good measurements or something. This should be. This is removing a lot of metal. Two. Still not moving metal fast enough. So I'm going to pause you guys again one second, see if I can get something else set up here. All right. So I got a grinder set up. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll show you guys this way. I know that I got to take 62 thousands off this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set 62 on my dial indicator. Lock it down. So that's set at sixty two thousands. I'm going to scribe myself a mark on the top here. I know it's going to go from right there. And that's a lot. It was not coming down that fast. We're going to make ourselves a line down this thing. Scribe ourselves a line. <coughs> From zero out here to there. I'm kind of zero, kind of right there. I want it just kind of flush up here. No, but it's sixty two. So what we want to do is we need to take that much material off down to nothing and then just make sure it's straight with a file. So we're going to try it on this right here. 
and I will do my best to grind it as square as I can. Anything that I mess up, I can fix with a file. So it's going to get a little bit loud here for a second. Well, let's try it. Uh, put this thing down for a second. I use this thing for woodworking. Let's take off the dusk shield so I can get lower on it. It is taking material off. I'm going to take this dust shield off so I can get a little lower. And find ourselves a Phillips head bit. Oh, figures. Try it again. Do some measurements now and see where we're at. I think I'm pretty close. And I would just have to clean it up with the file.
I'm still a little off the line. Let's just measure and see where we are. I got Bluetooth. So we haven't taken anything off the front. So the back is, we're trying to get close to um, 1.450. Just less than an inch and a half. Make sure I'm zero, zero. And I don't want to deflect the blade. Wait, four, seven, eight. We're getting close. Point four, seven, eight. So 28,000 still to go. Let's go back and do a little bit more. I'm going to turn this thing on. Back you guys up a little bit. This thing was way out. It was way, way out. Broke just in the right time. I'm down to the line now. Let's check it again. And we'll file her down. Um, how was I doing that? Should be pretty damn close now. Make sure it's zero. Four, six zero. Oh. 
455. Let's go to the front. Don't miss it. Miss the tooth. Oh. 456. So we're pretty close. Last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to call that probably good enough for this. Last thing I'm going to do is just file this edge, just eyeball it down, make sure it's square. It's very square. I did a pretty good job. We're going to file this edge down. And then what I will do off camera is, oh, look at that. Huh. What I will do off camera is I will make both sides parallel. So let's just check it with a file first. There's a big old bump in it. Wow, oh, a lot. That's going to have to. Just want to take the high spot. Is it taking it off? It's taking it off the top. Check it. Mark the high spots. Take the high spots off. Straight edge. Holy crap. Wow. I'm probably going to want to grind this. Probably going to want to grind this. It's pretty far out right now. It's this area right here. It's going to come off. I don't know that I could take it down anytime fast with a file. Again. Oh, it's getting close. Still right here. Getting close. It's almost there. It's almost flat. Metal out of the file. Check it again. Get closer. Oh, it's all perfect. Where is it going now? You just check where it's rocking. It's rocking right here just a little bit. Getting pretty close. I want to stay away from right here. I just want that to be flat. So we're just trying to feather into that area. Check it again. Oh, it's really, really close. Almost perfect now. Let's just see where. Almost perfect. It's rocking right at seven right there. Just a teeny bit. This is going to be way closer, I think, than one of these will come. Well, other than mine that came terrible. We're talking about getting it down to, you know, square within 
a couple thousands. Still just a teeny bit right through here. Getting really, really close. It's almost, the ruler's almost not moving now. Perfect. It's the smallest amount right here. And it's pretty damn flat. As flat as my ruler. Now, if you just want to take a file and make some jointing passes, make sure this file's flat. File's really flat. So I want to just kind of All right, I think, I think we got it. So now what I can do is I can check the width and see what's going to be ground off the other side. That's really nice. It's Maybe still just a teeny, teeny, teeny bit right here. Still kind of the teeniest bit high here in the middle. I should have known, I should have taken the middle out first. Whenever you're jointing something, like a piece of wood or anything, you should always take the middle out first. I should have taken the middle out because almost all the time, you're always going to create a hump. Almost all the time, you're going to create this shape when you're jointing. That's beautiful. have the smallest amount of movement. Can I see where it is? It's kind of like right here, smallest amount of movement. That's more than enough.
Awesome. It's perfect. All right. So hour long video, uh, DeWalt DCS573. So you can see the mark on there. 573. I have this side jointed to exactly parallel to the blade. And uh, for those of you who are going to say, well, you should have put a new blade on, that's why you use one tooth, check it. Um, that way you're taking out any run out or anything crazy with the tooth. And now I can mic across it. Now I can mic across it and make sure that this edge is parallel to this edge. So that's all I'm going to do now. I'm going to deburr it real quick. It's got a pretty, pretty good burr all the way down here. I'll just deburr it and mic it this way, mic it this way, grind this side until it's parallel to this, and we're good. So I hope for somebody who's running into the same problem as I have, and I know that I've heard, I've had other people tell me that. Um, I hope this helps. I know it seemed like it was a lot of work. Probably could have gone out to my big stand up in the outside shop and ground it down pretty quick. Um, but just for messing around in the shop on a crappy day, snowing out, and uh, this was um, a good ride. So now at least I know it's going to ride along a guide. And when you set a guide for ripping, if you clamp something down, you're just going to have to make sure that you you measure to the blade and use that measurement because it's not – it was an inch and a half anyway. So – uh, if I wouldn't use this anyway, I'd use my track saw, but uh, this at least it'll ride along a guide now and not skew off to the side. So hope you guys are having a great day. Appreciate the watch. Um, thoughts, comments, suggestions. Hit me up and um, I'm going to get it fixed on the other side. And this is Pirate Solutions Woodworking out.